players, amen, who's giving God the glory and not man. Y'all to be happy for some of them ball players get in front of the camera and tell you something about Jesus. Ah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, you ought to be excited, amen. Praise God and hallelujah. Y'all get me excited already because the devil is alive. Amen. God has a remedy. God has some young folk, amen, that said, for God I live, for God I die. You ought to give them some praise right now. Hallelujah. 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 You will find us today, amen, in the book of Judges. Before we get to the book of Judges, we're going to go into the book of Numbers, the 30th chapter. Can you stand? Please stand. It's time to hear from the Lord. Thank God for all of you, amen, who are here today, those that came late, we thank God for you, those that were coming later, amen, thank God for you, amen, bring your children. Numbers, the 30th chapter, one verse of scripture, amen, get opportunity to read this entire chapter, amen, but Numbers, the 30th chapter, verse number two, it says, if a man vows a vow unto the Lord, or swear an oath to bind his soul with a bond. He shall not break his word. He shall do according to all that proceedeth out of his mouth. That's Numbers, the 30th chapter, verse 2. If a man vow a vow unto the Lord, or swear an oath to bind his soul with a bond, he shall not break his word. He shall do according to all that proceedeth out of his mouth. Bear that in mind. Judges, the 11th chapter. Judges, the 11th chapter. Bear with me. Various passages. Uh, this is 40 verses. I'm not going to read all 40. I'm going to give you an introduction. Amen. To the lesson. I'm going to read verses 1 through 7. And also we're going to drop down to 30 through 49. Judges, the 11th chapter. The Bible says now, Jetha, the Gideonite, was a mighty man of valor, and he was the son of a harlot, and Gilead Beckett, Jetha, Jetha. And Gilead's wife bare him sons, and his wife's sons grew up, and they thrust out Jetha, and said unto him, Thou shalt not inherit in our father's house, for thou art the son of a strange woman. Then Jetha fled from his brethren, and dwelt in the land of Nob, and there were gathered vain men to Jetha, and he went out with them. And it came to pass to, in process of time that the children of Ammon made war against Israel. And it was so that when the children of Ammon made war against Israel, the elders of Gilead, Gilead went to fetch Jetha out of the land of Nam. And they said unto Jetha, Come and be our captain, that we may fight with the children of Ammon. And Jephthah said unto the elders of Gilead, Gilead, did not ye hate me and expel me out of my father's house? And why are you coming to me now when ye are in distress? Verse 30. And Lord, and Jephthah vowed a vow unto the Lord and said, If I shall with all, without fail deliver the children of Ammon into my hands, then it shall be that whatsoever coming forth of the doors of my house to meet me when I return in peace from the children of Ammon shall surely be the Lord's. I will offer it for a burnt offering. So Jephthah passed over unto the children of Ammon to fight against them, and the Lord delivered them into his hand. And he smote them from Ori, even until, until they come to Meredith, even to twenty cities unto the plains of the vineyard. And with a great slaughter, thus the children of Ammon were subdued before the children of Israel. And Jephthah came to Mizpah, unto his house, and behold, his daughter came out to meet him with trembles and with dance, and she was his only child. Besides her, he had neither son nor daughter. And it came to pass when he saw her that he rent his clothes and said, Alas, my daughter, thou hast brought me very low. Thou art one of them that trouble me. For I have opened my mouth unto the Lord, and I cannot go back. And he said unto him, my, she said to him, My father, if thou open thy mouth to the Lord, 
Do to me according to that which that proceeded out of thy mouth. For as much as the Lord hath taken vengeance for thee, for thine enemies, even the children of Ammon. And she said unto her father, Let this thing be done for me. Let me alone two months, that I may go up and down to the mountains, and bewail my virginity, I and my fellows. And he said, Go, and he sent her away for two months. And she went her with her companions, and bewailed her virginity upon the mountains. And it came to pass at the end of two months that she returned unto her father, who did with her according to his vow, which he had vowed. And she knew no man. And it was a custom in Israel that the daughters of Israel went yearly to them, the daughters of Jacob, the Gileanite, four days in a year. Verse 39. And it came to pass at the end of two months that she returned unto her father, who did with her according to his vow, which he had vowed, and she knew no man, and it was a custom in Israel. I want to use for a text this morning. I made a vow to the Lord, and I won't take it back. Yes, sir. I made a vow to the Lord, and I won't take it back. My subtopic deals with how good is your word. Right. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, touch right now. I feel your anointing. I feel your presence hovering all over me. I feel it in this place. I feel it, Lord, that there's something you want to say to somebody, even on YouTube, even on Facebook, uh, even in this sanctuary and in this city. God, move. Your word will accomplish what you're out to do. I said it with healing. I said it with conviction. I said it with power, changing, life-changing power. And I rebuke every demon in hell and try to hinder or frustrate this word today. God, move in a mighty way. Save the sinner. Reclaim the backslide. Encourage the saint. Help us have ears to hear. Be enlighten us, O oh God. That when we leave this place, we'll be lifted up above the situation that we came in here today. I decree it and declare it done in Jesus' name. You may be seated presence of the Lord. How good is your word? The question is asked, I always ask, has anybody told you today that you're loved and highly favored? If not, let me be the first to tell you that you're much loved and God loved each and every one of us. And not only that, you're highly favored. Amen. Tell somebody I'm God's favorite. God's favorite. Amen. You can turn that fan down a little bit. Amen. I think we've done cooled down here in California. The question that deals with our objective today is how good it is your word. Uh, we've been teaching in Bible study about truth. Amen. Truth is being exploited today. We also are teaching about righteousness. Hello, righteousness. We baptize people all the time and we tell them after we baptize them, we want them to walk in the newness of life. For some that we have baptized, unfortunately, they revert back into their old ways. Yes. They go back to lying, yes. go back to cheating, go back to drinking. Go back to smoking, and I ain't talking about Pell Mells and Winston. I'm talking about that funny cigarette, amen, that they legalized recently in a lot of our states. And so, we tell folk, amen, to walk in the newness of life, but we never tell them what the newness of life is, amen. which I had the church here this morning. Amen. And so today, we want to deal with the manner of being true. True to your word. Amen. It seems to be uh, some folk, praise God, are untruthful, and they have deceitfulness wrapped up in their heart, in their mind, in their spirit, and they see that they can't get out of it. They don't know any other way to be but to be slick, fast, chicanery, and dealing with Deceitful tactics. The Bible called it craftiness and the slay of the hand of man. Mm -hmm. Amen. So people think they're Chris Angel. I'll show you this, I'll show you that, and then disappear. 
I think Smokey had a song that said, the love I saw in you was just a mirage. <laughs> Amen. And sometimes we see people, praise God, and we think they're one thing and they're something else. The Lord Terry be here next week. Amen. I think I got a message for Halloween. Amen. Dealing with true colors. All right. Hanging for that. But here today, praise God, we want to find out something about your word. How good it is your word. The Bible tells us that Jetha, Jetha, amen, life, praise God, very interested man. He tells us that he was born of a strange woman. One context said he was born of a harlot, amen. Also, he was a bastard child. He was born out of wedlock. You better hear me here today, amen. And because he was born out of wedlock, the children of Israel, his own brethren, praise God, they ostracized him and they had nothing to do with him. Matter of fact, they didn't want to give him an inheritance. Right. Even though he was a stepson, a half son, a three quarters of a son, in their eyes, he still was a son of Israel right. because his father Gilead was a man of Israelite. Yeah. And the Bible let us know that he was born of a harlot. He was born of a strange woman, and his brethren, praise God, had nothing to do with him. Y'all got family members that got nothing to do with you? All right. Amen. Can I talk to somebody for a few seconds? Amen. And sometimes when folk ostracize you and don't have nothing to do with you, you kind of go, on, okay, let bygones be bygones. Amen. And the Bible said because of that, he dwelt with vain men. He hung out with a different crowd. He hung out in a different circle. He hung out, amen, with folk, amen, who was not in the commonwealth of God or in the family of God. The Bible called them vain people. How many folk y'all gonna hang around vain people? All right. Ah, can I just take my time for a minute? Ah, this thing, this happened overnight. Sometimes we read the word of God, we think things, praise God, this happened in concessions. But this went on for years. No communication, no amen by around, no birthday parties, no communication with his bloodline, his family whatsoever for years. Mm -hmm. Somebody say for years. years. But one thing I noticed about the text as it opened up, the Bible spoke of uh, 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 Jatha as a mighty man of valor. Yes. Mm -hmm. Ah, ah. Yeah, he was a, a mighty man of valor. I found that, that a mighty man of valor, praise God, is a man of war. Mm -hmm. Amen. He's a man, praise God, that is fearless. Praise God. Uh, uh, they, in the military, they give you out awards uh, for being men of valor. Amen. You've been in some kind of battles. You've been, amen, uh, you stood the test of time. You didn't run. You wasn't a chicken. You wasn't a coward. Amen. Matter of fact, you were a good fighter altogether. Amen. A mighty man of war. A mighty man of valor. The Bible spoke of him as a mighty man of valor. Somehow, praise God, his brethren, amen, even though they had nothing to do with him, they must have heard about his reputation. Right. Amen. Some of y'all, praise God, don't think for one minute they ain't got you in the back of their mind. Right. Amen. They may not be with you, but they got you somewhere in the back of your mind. They may be getting into the grapevine. Praise God, some things about you, right. but they know, amen, your history. They know, amen, where you're at. When you don't think they know where you're at, right. amen, there's somewhere around in their mind, somewhere your reputation is going to precede you. And God said that he was a mighty man of God. Do you not know, praise God, God calls you to be who you are? God has a name for you. You may call him the bastard child, the child out of wetlock, and the child out of this, and the child out of that. Amen. But God said he was a mighty man of valor. Do you know what God calls you? Do you know how God sees you in spite of how others see you? Yeah. The Bible said, amen, that he made a rash vow. I'm just about almost finished here. He made a rash vow. Vow, amen. Praise the name of the Lord. He made a rash vow. Here it is. The children that didn't have nothing to do with him, praise God, got themselves into a scrap, got themselves into a fight, got themselves into a war with the children of Ammon. 
Children aiming with fearless men, praise God. Men, praise God, that roamed the countryside, that had the 27 cities, amen, on lockdown, praise God, because they were good at what they did in trappings and fighting and modern war and weaponries and things of that nature. And they came against the children of Israel, and Israel, praise God, did not have a captain, amen, that had the heart or the guts or the fortitude to go up against the children of Ammon. But they knew that they had this bastard brother somewhere who was a mighty man of war. He was a valor, and they had the audacity to the audacity, oh, yeah. the audacity, praise God, to look him up. They text him, they yeah. got on the cell phone, amen, right. after years of not doing anything or no contact at all, amen, all of a sudden he's in need of, because right. yes. he needs somebody to champion their cause. Right. Hang on in there, bastard son. Somebody's going to give you a call. Right. Hang on in there. Call about your mama. They didn't say right. anything about you. Right. Uh, yeah, you know, he, he ain't this and he ain't that. I got news for you. Some of these children out of wedlock, amen, got more guts, more heart, more sincerity, more fortitude than some of you who say, I'm baptized in Jesus' name. I said it and filled the Holy Ghost. There's some folk out there that said they mean they say and say what they mean. Yes, sir. And so they called for him and said, we need you, amen, to help us fight this war. He said, I got news for you. He said, you guys come to me after having nothing to do with me for years, and all of a sudden, now you want me to be with you to get into this war. He said, I tell you what, now, all of you chickens and what now, all of you cowards, amen, who have the audacity, amen, to call me up, amen. I don't want nothing to do with you, but guess what? I'm going to be your captain. All right. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. I'm going to be the leader. I'm going to be the general here. Don't just call me up to fight with you, but I can't hang out with you cats, man, because I got some vain brothers that's coming with me. Yeah. Right. They from the Crips. They from the Bloods. Right. They from New right. York City. They from right. Somerville. Right. Amen. These some bad boys, and they don't want to be hanging around some cats that are going to run out on them. Right. I know these vain men, yeah. praise God. One thing about a vain man, one thing about folk, amen, who are mighty men of power, they already been through hell and high water. Right. Uh, they already been through the mills. Uh, they already been talked about. They already right. been ridiculed. Uh, right. They already been through all the stuff, amen, right. folk just trying to get through. Uh, they have been through the hard part. And one thing about them, they ain't afraid to die. Right. Come on. Come on. Somebody says, if I don't live, and for God I die. Amen. They already dead in the eyes of you anyway. Right. So why do they all be fearful, amen, of anything else that come their way? I met some brothers, amen, take kill me and get it over with. Right. Shoot me, I can't die. Been through hell, lived in the right. ghettos, right. been through bad schools, right. been through bad situations, but yet I'm still here. Yeah. God said, I need somebody, amen, that ain't afraid of the devil, that ain't a fearful, amen. I'm with somebody, amen, that want to walk with me, yeah. ain't going to run out, praise yeah. God, when the heat get high, the fire get yeah. hot. Yeah. And so the Bible said uh, that this man became their captain. So he went down and he prayed in verse number 30. After he became the captain of Israel. Jephthah vowed a vow uh, unto the Lord, verse 30. Uh, and he said, If I shall without fail uh, deliver the children of Amor to my hand, uh, then it shall be that whatsoever come forth uh, out of the doors of my house to meet me uh, when I return in peace from the children of Amor, uh, I surely will, Lord. Uh, I'll put it up on their offer. Uh, I'll put it on the sacrifice. Uh, I'll burn it up to you. Uh, I made a vow to the Lord. Uh, Oh, Lord, have mercy. We got to be careful when we open up our mouth to the Lord. Numbers tell us, amen, that when you make a vow to the Lord, fear not, amen, not to pay it. Don't, amen, renege on God. Don't change your mind. You're binding by your mouth and by your word. There was a time, praise God, amen, that a man's handshake meant something. They shake your hand and said, I'm going to do something, something. And you shook on it and you stood by your word. Praise the name of the Lord. You ain't had to write a contract out and take them down to the courthouse to make them, amen, honor their word. Their word with their bond and their bond was their word. And he made a vow to the Lord. 
rash as it was. I don't know what he was thinking. Sometimes we do the same thing. We pop off at the mouth. Amen.